all disease is cell disease. And I'm not saying baldness is a disease, but it's certainly something breaking down. And if it's affecting this, if it's affected by the cell, it means the blood, which means toxicity, which means sugar, which means cortisol, which means malnourishment, which means a lack of oxygen, the same things over and over and over again. That's why you have to enrich your diet with supplementation. That's why you have to ensure that your diet is rich with, with nutrients. Foods are, are nutritionally dense. This is how you take care of, of keeping your hair. It's the same way you take care of keeping your bones strong and your muscles strong and your brain cells strong. Protein is obviously important. Keratin, which makes up the hair shaft, is protein. Yesterday we talked about the mineral sulfur. Zinc is also important. The B vitamins are also important. It's not like there's one vitamin for hair. It's not like there's one mineral for hair. They're all important. Melatonin, that's another one that can be helpful. Essential fatty acids, not because they're specific for the hair, but because they're specific for health. Then there's the relationship of melatonin to hair strength. You know, when we talk about melatonin, we think of sleep, but in reality, there are so many things that are associated with melatonin. Hair is, uh, having strong hair is a building phenomena, and melatonin is a building agent. Melatonin helps the body go into relaxation mode so it can build. Not just hair, but everything, all the good stuff, muscles and bones, these all benefit. These are all areas in the body that benefit from melatonin. Melatonin is anti-aging, it's anti-cancer, it supports the immune system, it's bodybuilding, it's healing. And all of this is about activation of the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation nervous system, the rest and digest nervous system. And melatonin is a rest and digest nervous system hormone. It's like a general, all around, feel good hormone of health. And by the way, by the way, melatonin, the feel-good hormone, is antagonized or blocked or has, a, it has an opposite. Remember, hormones have opposites. The opposite hormone to melatonin is serotonin. What does that tell you about serotonin? Melatonin is the relaxation, feel-good, healing and health, bodybuilding, hair-building hormone. What is serotonin? Well, it's antagonistic to melatonin. We always hear about how melatonin or how serotonin is your happy hormone. Oh, serotonin, if you're depressed, take serotonin, serotonin. We think that we take serotonin and we're happy. No, that's not how it works. Serotonin is not a happy hormone. It's a hormone of awareness. It's a hormone of vigilance. That's why Prozac doesn't make you happy. Prozac just makes you not depressed. It makes you not anything. It makes you sort of neutral. It doesn't make you happy. Maybe better than being depressed, I don't know. But it's not like serotonin is a happy hormone. Serotonin is an awareness hormone. It's a vigilance hormone. It's a daytime hormone. Melatonin, nighttime hormone. Healing at nighttime. Daytime is when we're vigilant. We're aware. We're looking around for tigers and lions and bears. Serotonin is the hormone that allows us to do that. You need serotonin. Nobody's knocking serotonin. It's a, it may be the most fundamental hormone in the body, arguably. But playing around with serotonin drugs, keeping serotonin levels artificially high, now that's a problem. And if you go Google it, there's all kinds of websites that talk about the dangers of serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Thank you for being here. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. Sipping on my BTT here. If you guys are drinking coffee and you want to wean yourself off of coffee, try the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Do some Beyond Tangy Tangerine and then start to wean yourself off the coffee. You're going to find you don't, don't need as much coffee because you get a serious buzz off of this stuff. Of course, you can always purchase your Beyond Tangy Tangerine at brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Dr. Wallach was on Coast to Coast last night. He got a bunch of phone calls or, and emails. I, don't, I didn't get to listen to it. But I know Dr. Wallach, whatever he's on, we get tons of emails and calls because he, he just exudes this energy of taking a stand, of committing. Dr. Wallach's been doing it for about what he does for, I don't know, 60 years, probably 55 years. That's what we're all about at Longevity, taking a stand. 
I'm taking a stand on this program, and not necessarily about the longevity products or the longevity business, but taking a stand for health, making a commitment to making a difference. That's what longevity is about. That's what we should all be about, making a commitment to making a difference. What if we all made a commitment to making a difference in the world, to make, making the world a better place, not just making a difference, making the world better? Personally, I'm a commitment phobe. I don't like commitment. But commitment is easy if you believe in something. Commitment is easy if you know, not just believe, but know. I'm committed to health because I know that you can be healthy. I know that if you're dealing with a health crisis, a de degenerative health issue, or even if it's something as simple as acne or your hair is falling out or your hair is, is graying, I know that there is a way. I've seen it over and over and over again. Not only does it make sense, I've seen it. And if you're sick or you know somebody who's sick, listen to this. I am committed to getting you better. I'm committed to helping you get yourself better. And it's not difficult. It, that's the ultimate tragedy. It is not difficult. And I'm not sitting here telling you that I'm some kind of paragon of health virtue, that I uh, uh, am some kind of health nut. I'm not. I'm just telling you as a therapist, as a clinician, as somebody who's worked with people for 30 years, if your body is degenerating, you can stop it immediately. You can uh, turn this thing around immediately. The body can turn on a dime, but we have to turn on a dime. And it doesn't involve a lot of stuff. It involves working on the digestive system. It involves blood sugar. It involves detoxification through deep breathing and not putting the toxins in, patching up the gut, a little bit of exercise, and a lot of rest. That's the cool thing about this. Disease represents a lack of rest. When we're at dis-ease, when we're not at ease, we're not at rest. And we all know how wonderful we feel when we're rested. Same with the body. The body feels wonderful when it's rested. That's what melatonin's about. That's what serotonin is not about. Serotonin. If you want to know about serotonin, look into something called serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome is a complex of symptoms that's caused by too much serotonin, right? Serotonin, the so-called feel-good hormone. Serotonin syndrome, too much serotonin symptoms include restlessness, nervousness, anxiety, agitation, diarrhea, vomiting, excessive heartbeat and high, uh, high blood pressure, delusions. These are all excessive excesses in the body's awareness system. Serotonin is an awareness hormone, and yes, you need it, obviously, but it's not the feel-good hormone. The feel-good hormone is its antagonist, its rest hormone. That's melatonin. Melatonin is the rest hormone. The body loves to rest. I don't know how much cooler it can be. God wants us in a hot tub. You're sitting on the couch, deep breathing, you're taking your medicine. Sitting on the couch and deep breathing will lower your blood pressure faster and cleaner than any antihypertensive can ever do it. A hot bath will do the same thing. Why do you think people get great ideas in the shower? Great ideas when, in the sauna. Why do you think people like saunas? All of this is, are ways that we can slow the body down, relax the body. Now, excessive heat, by the way, that's different. Excessive heat if the, uh, activates the emergency response, but warmth, comfortable heat, especially when it involves water. All right, tomorrow we'll continue talking about melatonin. We'll talk about melatonin and diabetes. I bet you didn't know that. And uh, melatonin blood fats and melatonin brain health and melatonin and uh, autoimmunity. And, of course, we'll talk about melatonin and the skin as well. Melatonin also is a, got its reputation, its name, from being a skin hormone. Mela for pigment, tonin for tonicity. It's a pigment hormone. We'll talk about all that tomorrow as we continue with hormone health and skin health on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Susan in Texas. What's up? Welcome to the bright side. Hi, Ben. Hey, Susan. Um, I would like to, um, uh, I've been listening for quite some time to you and Doc Wallach, and I I have tinnitus, first of all. Okay. Um, and want some help with that? That's a good question. I haven't gotten that uh, on the air before, but I get a lot of emails about it. You want some help right. with that, or is there something else? That, anything that, else? And it's probably in conjunction with, I also have AFib, which I've listened it's to. It's all the working together, babe. It's all yeah, working together. You know. So you know from I, listening I like, to the... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I have an issue about, uh, I think it would be more towards 
and I need the confirmation from you, to take Z radical and Picoid C because of uh, probably some kosher issues or some uh, ingredient issues. Kosher. It's not. Uh, it's not kosher. The stuff. The is there? Co- oh, because it's shrimp or something. It's seaweed. That's no. That shouldn't be a problem. What do you mean? It's not kosher. So, uh, no. The Z- no. That the that the normal packages that you would the pig packs and stuff you would normally recommend. I can't take those, so I'm okay. thinking I would have to go to like Z radical and Picoid. No, they don't work quite them. like that. It doesn't work quite like that. Um, what you want to do is, if we'll, well, first of all, let, let's talk about the tinnitus and the AFib, okay? Because those are, those are yeah. really important right there. The, the AFib is really important. The tinnitus is a sign that something's going on. Your body is in distress mode. Tinnitus is an inflammatory issue. It's inflammation inside the inner ear. How we hear sounds is a complicated electromagnetic phenomena, a bioelectrical magnetic, magnetic phenomena. There's lots of electrical energy and lots of flowing and lots of movement of hairs, microscopic hairs. Weird things have to happen, and a lot of them, in order for us to hear. This, this uh, uh, area, if it becomes inflamed, is going to throw off all the electrical energy. So you have an inflammatory condition. This tinnitus is nothing more than Alzheimer's disease of the inner ear. You follow me? It's arthritis yeah. of the inner ear. It's any disease you want to name, degenerative disease you want to name, of the inner ear. It's the same thing. Now, the AFib is a sign that your blood is getting dirty. Well, it's the same thing. AFib is dirty blood. It's blood that doesn't have oxygen. It's blood that's got lots of sugar in it and blood that's got lots of toxicity and blood that isn't flowing correctly. And all of this is causing changes in the electrical energy of the heart. And so the heart, like the inner ear, is an electrical, uh, electrical system. And infl- inflammation there is going to throw off the flow of electrical energy. Are you with me? I am. Okay. So what do we do? This is all theory and it's all lovely, but what do we do? We clean the blood, Susan. Clean the okay. blood. Hang on and I'll tell you some, some specifics when we come back from our break, okay? Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We'll be back right after this on The Bright Side. All right. We are back on The Bright Side talking to Susan in Texas about tinnitus and uh, AFib. Susan, are you there? I am. Hey, Susan. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, I gave you the, the theory. It involves inflammation. It involves the emergency response. It involves some kind of burden on the body. So here's what you do practically to take care of this. It's not only a question of supplementation, by the way, but that's, def- that's absolutely going to, going to be involved. Number one, relax the body. Deep breathing, oxygenation is very important, especially for the AFib. AFib is one of the ways the, you can think of it like your heart freaking out basically is what it is. Your heart goes into a seizure. So you got to calm the body down, slow, deep breathing on a regular basis, like, like three times a day, five minutes a day, 15 seconds in through the nose, 15 seconds out. And you have to work yourself up to that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, good. Secondly, you want to make sure that your, the blood doesn't have any toxins, and that includes sugar flooding into it. Sugar is a big, big problem with, tinnitus, with both with AFib certainly and also with tinnitus. So keeping your sugar intake down, using nutrients to help your body process sugar also. And that includes electrolytes and you'll get those in the BTT and you should definitely be sipping on that all day. I'm, sh- I'm sure you're already using it. And uh, 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 all minerals in general, magnesium, zinc is especially important by the way for tinnitus and also for blood sugar. Uh, 50, I would be doing 50 milligrams, five zero milligrams of zinc picolinate. That's my favorite, favorite form of zinc. Picolinate is super inexpensive. And it can be mm-hmm. really helpful for lots of things. And most people are zinc deficient. Uh, then you're going to want to patch up the gut. The Fucoid Z will work for patching up the gut. That's where you get benefits. Also the Biolumin Nightly Essence. And then the entire Healthy Start Pack. Do a food diary. It's very difficult to have AFib and tinnitus, which imply a, a circulatory condition, without also having a digestive problem or digestive issues or food intolerances. And it may be something that you're missing. And as long as there's toxicity entering into the digestive tract through these uh, uh, poorly processed foods, it's going to make it much more difficult for you to reverse the condition. So it's really the same thing we always talk about. Digestion, blood sugar, rest the body, relax the body, oxygenation, make sure you're on a supplement program especially one that features water-soluble nutrients. Water-soluble because this is an electrical thing that we're talking about. That means electrolytes.